um, good evening. Um, we are all again gathering here to practice meditation tonight. So we're still um, working on uh, watching the thoughts uh, and practicing with the thoughts and how much we are driven by that thought. A few days ago, I was uh, talking with uh, one gentleman who lost uh, his wife a few years ago and uh, have got the two children. Initially, he went through very difficult time, went on a sort of a depression and a sadness and uh, was unable to work. But however, he was fortunate that um, from the office he was given uh, some time off for six months. And with that, all the families were began to worried about him, worried about his children, what's going to happen. And this man was uh, kind of not wanting to talk to anybody and didn't want to go anywhere. So she, so he was basically in. Uh, a deep thought. Now, meanwhile, his uh, relatives, particularly his uh, wife's side, uh, worried too much and encouraged him to go and see counselors right, for the counseling. Uh, and then it happened that. Whoever counsellor he went and discussed and talked, he was so intelligent enough. So he was more intelligent. No. So with that, he felt that he doesn't want to go to see a counsellor anymore. So after went on with a few different uh, counsellors, he decided to watch his own mind. He began to investigate how he is caught up with this thought process, how he caught up with the suffering, and why he wanted to just isolate himself. And it happened that uh, he managed to see the relationship that he built up while uh, he she was still alive. And then she realized that um, before she came into his life, he was alone. And on the way, he adapted him, uh, adapted her and began to uh, develop this relationship that belongs to me, grass, become connected. So develop this connection so that become conditioned that uh, without her, life is miserable. Losing her is like uh, losing life. So that's how he could not back to the normal days. So when he was reflecting on that, contemplating on that, then he realized, actually it is a mind connection, mind grasping. Uh, mind is holding on to somebody, holding on to something. And this <coughs> grasp actually is the main reason of our suffering. Uh, and when we look at the Buddha's teachings, the Buddha also said 
upadana, panchupadana khanda dukha. Having a, this attachment to the five aggregate itself is a suffering. And we are talking about not our five aggregates, another five aggregates, see? That's why she, he was in a deep depression. He was having attachment with his wife, which is another five aggregate. We have attachment to our, this five aggregate is suffering enough and we still want to have another body. <laughs> huh? So that grasping uh, causes this mental uh, illnesses and uh, uh, this uh, bereavement goes on and on. And when we look at that, when we look at that, what we can get it from there that um, we have always living, or we are always living with the fear. Whenever we are with somebody, whenever we develop this connection, whenever we have developed this grasping nature, then we are always in fear of losing. And because of having this fear of losing, what happens? Uh, that we generate so much mentally and disturbed uh, men, uh, mindset, uh, mindset, and then life becomes miserable, and we cannot focus on, and we cannot uh, keep ourselves developing this positive mindset. Always, mind is occupied by this uh, by this fear of losing. Even when we meditate, again, that's why we, we, can't, we cannot concentrate because we have back in our mind saying that I have this fear of losing. And with that, we cannot relax. Yeah? We cannot relax ourselves. Our, our, our brains are so working so hard and we cannot relax. When we can't relax, then it's very difficult to... Uh, mindfully paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. So that's why the first and first, we have to relax ourselves. Yeah. An ability to release any attachment that we have. So that's why when we look at the um, a third noble truth. Yeah. Say, do you remember third noble truth? Uh, third noble truth is a niroda, yeah, cessation, uh, so ending. Uh, and here, you know, the Buddha, Sim, you know, Buddha clearly said in the Dhamma Chakravatana Sutra, the first discourse, Chago patine sako mutti analyo. Uh, so ability to let go in these four ways having those attachments to things. Ability to let go. Chago Patinisako Mutti Analayo. Chago is a relinquish, giving it away. Patinisako not having uh, attachment to it in a certain stage, but still mentally holding on to it. Mutti that like you have given up, and you, know, you have like a physically taking it out from your possession or area uh, and then analyo means it's like completely uh, beyond uh, your attachment so you are not thinking of that it's like uh, you have put things in a, a black dustbin and the council has taken it away so no no you can't go back and search for it anymore not like when you throw in your room, you still go back and collect. Yeah? And then from room, let's say put it in the kitchen, you still go back and then take it back. And even when you put it in the dustbin, the black dustbin outside the, ba uh, outside the house, uh, you still, if you want to, go back and take it back again. But if a council taken away, then okay, let it go. <laughs> Uh -huh. like that. Mm. So these are the uh, ways that we can let go uh, and uh, letting go of that. Uh, and 
this is the main reason once we can live like that and relax in this state what happens is that we can automatically generate this kindness uh, loving kindness so called we meta uh, we call it meta so meta automatically generates to ourselves and then to the rest of other people too uh, so this is how the meta becomes the what's called yani uh, kataya so you are with the meta uh, you are living with the meta all the time Bahuli uh, kataya, you have to make it more and more, practice it more and more. Not just the thinking of I have to share a meta, but it coming from your heart. Uh, it's coming from your heart, which is free from any holding on to things. There is no fear, there is no danger, there is no anger. Uh, like that. So that comes from your heart. And that Basically, not having this grasping mind, mentally not holding on to something, understanding that we came into this world because of something, uh, if we look at from the Buddhist perspective, is because of our karma. We came in and we adopt somebody in, uh, and then eventually it just dissolves anyway. Whenever we, there is a, this separation, then we normally having this holding on to uh, that person and feeling that not wanting to let it go and that's exactly what happened to this gentleman but the very moment when he realized that his mind actually was holding on to it uh, the grasping needing that person needing that com uh, companion was the main reason of the suffering so he was able to let go so he was free. Now he's free. Uh, he could explain his experience. And then with that, he was able to look at himself. That what had happened and what ha he was doing. Harming to himself and harming to children. Ha you know, making everybody worried. So he was able to share loving kindness to himself. Meta to himself. And then with that caring, he was able to you know, uh, let other people feel free and so that's why it's very important to recognize how our thought works and then understanding that these are basically we connect develop connection and then holding on to it but eventually and ultimately it has to go separation so if we understand that then we will be free we can relax any situation and then we can go forward with what we need to be done. Okay? So I offer this as a reflection for today. Now let's practice meditation. Okay? Now. now relax yourself. And just to be here and now. Observing the body sitting here. And aware of a mind body. You may spend some time uh, taking a long deep breath just to relax the entire body, particularly relaxing your mind. Is there anything that is really bothering you that you're mentally grasping and holding onto it? When you're holding on to that what happens in your brain? 
is a tightness, kind of a blocking yourself to see through. So relaxing that uh, in your brain. So when you relax your brain, you may be able to <coughs> observe relaxation in your face, in your muscles, in your face. And relaxing the entire body. You may observe the breath slowly and breathing out slowly just to let the heart beat slower. And that also helps to relax the mind body. So when you're thinking of anything that is, that you are holding on to it and making you feel uncomfortable, observing that, and try to observe the fear of uh, not happening as we want or as we wish And because of that grasp generates the fear and because of the fear it generates the anger and hate. The watching of that thoughts 
how it proliferates and manifests. And how it closes our doors. So mindfulness, um, awareness of it, opens it up and seeing it clearly. But if you feel that your mind is restless, not able to notice these thoughts, not able to be mindful of these uh, manifestations, then just to be with yourself, mind-body here, watching the breath, wherever you feel, whether in your nose or in your belly, just mindfully paying attention to it, just settling down, grounding yourself. Whenever thoughts come, distraction comes, simply observing, acknowledging, noting and let it go. And relax the mind-body. And as your mind settled and slowly observing these attachments and how it generates the tension, the fear, the anger and so on.
Let's break it.